Welcome to Sharing the Word. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Welcome to Sharing the Word. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. I've been preaching on the um, series called The Fear of the Lord. Uh, You can hear that on our audio podcast, Sharing the Word. Also, we preach on that subject. I preach on that subject on our series called Take 5. You can hear and watch both Sharing the Word and Take 5 on YouTube, on Podbean, as well as Rumble. You can watch Sharing the Word on these television broadcasts on the Now Network every Saturday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm happy to say you can watch us on Galilee TV uh, Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Both those channels are on Roku. Uh, you can also go to their online uh, site as well. You can even download uh, the app uh, called Sharing the Word. <laughs> well, it's not Sharing the Word app, but we do have that coming, by the way. But you can download the uh, television app, the Now Network, and Galilee TV on your Apple Store and Google Store as well. And then just watch live streaming as well as video on demand. Uh, the series Sharing the Word. So I want to say praise God to that as well. Today, when we get into this chapter of Deuteronomy 28, let me take a few minutes to explain where we're going. The fear of the Lord. When you hear the fear of the Lord, when you read the fear of the Lord, something inside you comes into agreement, the Holy Spirit comes into the agreement that you should fear God. And sometimes when we, when we look at fear or hear the word fear, we think that's where our natural responses are supposed to either fight or flight. Some people use the word fear in the acronyms of uh, fear is, you know, false evidence appearing real. <laughs> Uh, I'm a scientist, I'm a researcher, (laughs) I do research, PhD type stuff, and fear to me is fictitious expression against reality. It's fiction. Most, Most people who are afraid of things is because it's not real or the outcome has logical results, empirical results, if you will. Not this emotional, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be, so therefore I'm afraid. So when we fear God, what we're saying is we believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. So to seek God, to believe that he exists, puts you into a reverent form of fear for God because he's an all-consuming fire. He is holy. He is holy, my friend. This is, this is where people miss it. He is holy. God is a holy, just God. <sighs> Sometimes even thinking about God, I'm, I'm like, wow. If you don't have a wow or fear of the Lord, if you can't even think about his name, Yahweh, if you can't think of his name, you know, Elion, if you can't think of El Shaddai, if you can't think of the name of the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, bright and morning star. If you can't get to that point where you go, wow, then you don't have the fear of God. You don't have the fear of God. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when you fear the Lord and you walk in the light as he's in the light and you have fellowship with him, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all your sins. That's 1 John 1, verse 7 through 9. So my friends, I want fellowship with God. And I know I have to remain in him because he's in me. And when I know he's holy, I must be holy. Amen. And so I have to think about why am I afraid of things of this world? If I have those things, why? I said in my uh, other message to take a list of things that you're afraid of. 
and then put God over here. Just, just take a list of things that say you're afraid of. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid. Just write a list. Now on your, <laughs> put it in a column. Then, then right, right over here on, the, on your paper, on your computer, put God. Just put the name God down. And can you say if you have a fear of death and you look over to the right and you see God's name? Uh, no, I don't fear death. Why? Because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm afraid to speak in front of people. There's God. He called Moses to do it. <laughs> God was with him. God anointed him. God said, take your staff with you. I will speak through you. I will speak through you and, and Aaron. You will be like gods to them. So when you look at your fear, it's fiction. That's why I call it fictitious expression against reality, which is there's God. That's trademark, by the way. I just want to throw that out. You. That's, that's my expression of, of, of what the definition of fear is or the acronym. But here's what I want to say. And I love you, my friends. Let me, let me help you here. When you have a true fear of God, you walk around with this confidence that no weapon formed against you will ever prosper in the name of Jesus. None. What's there to fear? If God be for you, who can be against you? Don't be afraid of the terror by night and the arrow by day, according to Psalm 91. Don't be afraid. I'm just saying, don't be afraid. Know that God is greater. God is in you. And so when I look at my list, when I had a list, I said, why am I afraid of this and that and the other? And then here's God, who raised the dead, who fed the multitudes. I mean, Jesus had, come on, he had... <laughs> bread and some fish and he lifted up in heaven and he fed 5,000 people had 12 baskets left over then he does the same thing with 4,000 <laughs> he had seven baskets left over my friends Jesus is God and when you know he is your brother he's your savior he is your messiah he's everything to you what's there to fear if David has a young boy can go out in the field and take on a dude that's bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I love Shaq. <laughs> if you're watching Shaq, I do love you, man. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a great player. But Shaq's a big boy. So was Goliath. Mm. Ten feet tall. <laughs> they was just a strong, they call him ruddy, studly kind of kid. Took a stone with a slingshot, and boom, because he wasn't afraid. But behind him was the whole army. Oh, listen to me. The whole army of Israel, including the king, which was Saul. In fear of man. They had the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, what's the fear if God is the Lord of your army? What's the fear when God is the Lord of your home? Now I get it. Fear is contagious. Fear is, um, that's a pandemic of fear everywhere. The economy, inflation, this COVID, this monkeypox. Everybody has something. Oh, crime in the street. Everybody wants to run around, take the news, and operate in fear. I'm not afraid to take my wife out. I'm not afraid for me to go and do what I have to do. You know, trust that the Lord is protecting you. Trust that the Lord is with you. What's there to fear? The Bible says, if you have fear, you have no faith. The only one to fear is to fear God. So when we get into Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm going to make this bridge before we have our break too. When you fear God, this is important. You learn to walk in obedience to God. Fearing the Lord is to hate evil. I choose the fear of the Lord because I hate evil. And I rather do things that please God than operate in fear, which means I have no faith, and do the things that the flesh says to do. I'm not going to bow to my flesh, my sin nature, because it's afraid. If Christ is in you, listen to me, if Christ is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you, say to fear, 
you have no place. Because I have to obey God. Fear takes you away from fear of things of man. Not the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord keeps you away. But watch this. Fear, your human fear, fear keeps you away from serving God. You can't be obedient. Israel was obedient until Moses passed away. They were obedient. Then Joshua passed away. They're disobedient. Then judges show up. They're obedient. Then they fall away. Because the judge dies. Serve the Lord with fear. And you will live in obedience. Learn to fear the Lord. You will hate evil. Fearing God tells me this. This is what it says for me. To fear God, to fear God, is to hate evil. To fear God, to fear God, is to obey God. If I'm sleeping on uh, the plane and there comes turbulence and you wake up and you're like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? I can be afraid of that because there's turbulence. Everybody's like, oh, wow, this is a rougher ride. I'm like, man, if this is time to go, it's time to go. But I know where I'm going. <laughs> and my friends who know me know I don't, like, I don't like flying this much. But I'm not afraid anymore. I used to. That was on my list. And then I go, oh, I'll be on the plane. I'll see you then. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Go down, you go down. Uh, get in the car. Drive around today. Oh, my goodness. Get, put me back in a plane. But the fear of the Lord tells you, I, I got you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the terror at night and the arrow by day, according to Psalm 91. So, in conclusion, before we take a break, fear of the Lord equals obedience to serve God. Let me say it again. The fear of the Lord equals obedience to serve God. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about the results that the fear of the Lord, that equals obedience, what the results are right after this break. Before we took our break, I said the fear of the Lord equals obedience and the results are impressive. Fear of the Lord equals obedience and therefore the results in the Bible that talk about what the results are for being obedient when you serve God. I love Ecclesiastes, you already know that. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 is for me. But I wanna look at Deuteronomy 28. We're gonna look at verses one through 12 with the time we have remaining. So if you have your Bible, uh, if you're listening, that's great too. You can hear our audio version of the same message. So if you're at the gym or uh, listening to it on <laughs> your uh, phone, listen to it. If you're driving, listen to it, okay? Keep your eyes on the roll. But if you're watching on TV, okay, here we go. Deuteronomy, blessings. Remember, fear of the Lord. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I just, I get excited. The fear of the Lord equals obedience and the results are blessings. I mean, you just got to think about that. Fear of the Lord equals <laughs> obeying God, which leads to blessings. Amen. So it starts off in Deuteronomy 28. If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today, the Lord, your God, will set you high above all nations on earth, all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Now, my friends, we're grafted into to the family of God because of Israel, because of Abraham. So if we're, if we're by faith, remember, by faith, Abraham's the father of faith, and we're adopted in, amen, just read the Bible, it's, it's all there. Mm. These blessings don't apply just to Israel. It applies to those who are the family of Israel through Abraham, the promise. Amen? 
So this applies to you. That's why the Bible is written. It is so amazing when you really practice the fear of the Lord, you'll learn to obey God because you'd rather please him than man. And by obeying God, you'll have blessings. Hey, it doesn't have to be material blessings. It doesn't have to be uh, financial rewards. It doesn't have to be anything that we can say tangibly hold, but it does include that, but it also has spiritual blessings as well. So let's look at the blessings. It starts off in verse three. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Okay, now we can illustrate that and say for us today, that means at work, I'm blessed. I'm gonna do a good job at work. I'm gonna see that I do everything my boss, my supervisor tells me to do. My family's blessed because I'm obedient. So whatever I own, whatever I have, I'm gonna be blessed, amen. If we agree, just say amen. He goes on in verse five, your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. So that's saying that everything you do, you're, you're, you're making dough. You're going to make bread. Leavened bread, unleavened bread. You're making bread. That's a staple back then. You will be blessed, verse 6, when you come in and blessed when you go out. Look, we can get down to the basic stuff. This is granular level type understanding what blessings come because of obedience, because you fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord. You'll be obedient and you'll have blessings. And what are the blessings? What is a blessing anyway? Unmerited favor? We could say all that. We could say favor of God that we don't deserve. Yeah, but you do deserve. Listen to me. This is where people, you can get into grace and blessings, tie them, tie them together. You get blessings because he says, God says, you do these things, obey me, fear me, I will give this to you. You're a parent. If you're a parent, listen up. This is funny. I said this to a couple of parents in some Bible studies. When you tell the kids, here are the rules of the house, and the kid that doesn't obey the rules, do you give them the, the large piece of cake? Do you give them the desserts? No, you give the dessert after dinner to the kid that was obedient. Look, I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you this. I've been around families. I have two grown children. They have children. Look, obedience is everything. If your children obey you, you're going to bless them. Your grandchildren obey you, you're going to bless them. Obedience is what we are wired to do. Listen to me. We are wired by God, DNA-wise, to obey God, to fear God. It's in our DNA. We have the choice to not fear God and not to obey Him. So if you're dna from God, he made you, and his DNA is in you, you're wired to hear the voice of God and obey him. If you obey him, he says, let me tell you what will happen because you obey me. I will do the following for you. Now, my friends, when I read Deuteronomy 28, I look at least 12 to 13 verses of all these blessings that come from obe for, because you're obedient. Then the remaining verses, more than 13 verses, to conclude with the chapter, is the consequences for disobedience. We're only focusing today on obedience equals <laughs> blessings. I want to be blessed. I know I stick my hand into a fire, I'm going to get burned. Therefore, I'm not sticking my hand in a fire. I'm not going to get burned. But when I know I obey God because I fear God, I'm going to be blessed. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your blessings. That's where you have to get. Okay, let's look at verse seven. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Whoa, do you believe? I do. Have I seen that? Yes, I have. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm not going to get into my testimonial stories of what I've been through with people who have rose up against me. I'm not going to get into all that. I will later on some occasions give you a testimony of what has happened. But when the Lord says, when you fear me and obey me, and here are the blessings, all your enemies will flee in different directions. You can declare and decree 
uh, Psalm 33, 34, 35, and 36. Just read what David said about his enemies. Read those chapters. Read that book. <laughs> read Psalm. Read those chapters. You'll see what I'm talking about. David prayed similar prayers. But God said, here's what would happen when you obey me. <laughs> he says he will grant you, <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. He will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. You'll see them. Look, I have people who rose up that I didn't do nothing to. These are people that you can say are your family, your friends, your co-workers, those who ministered with you. They rose up against you. And all the Lord requires of you, are you, are you listening, is to fear God and obey his commandments. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Fear God and obey his commandments. What are the results for fearing God, obeying him? What are the results? These are the blessings. And I've seen enemies who just turned against you, flee one direction. Hey, if that means they quit, if that means they moved, if that means they just say, ah, I don't want nothing to do. Hey, flee. Go this way, go that way. And guess what? God, oh, God brings restoration. God brings healing because you were betrayed. Your enemies will flee. He says this. So watch this. This is really good. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Verse eight. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything, oh, here we go, you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. That applies to you. He will bless you when you put your hands on anything because why? You fear the Lord and you obey him. You'll get people to go, why are you so blessed? You just give the story. I fear God and obey him. So if you want to give somebody uh, the formula to be blessed by God, tell them to read Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 through 13. Just have them read it. If you fear God and obey him, you will be blessed. And he is telling us, God is telling us through his word, and his word never returns void. His word is true. Amen. He is telling us that when you fear the Lord and obey him, you will be blessed. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns. That means, hey, you work. Your barns. What's a barn for? Okay, store, hay, put everything. You got animals. Okay. He's telling you, he will bring a blessing on your business and on everything you put your hand to. So you just imagine what that is. You put your hands to anything, you're going to be blessed. Why? You walk in the fear of the Lord and you obey him. That's what matters. And here's the results. Fear of God equals obedience to God, which results are blessings. Amen. Verse 8. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord, verse 9, will establish you as his holy people as he has promised you on oath. If you, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Now we're getting to conditions of obedience. Now, I only have a few more minutes, but let me just say, say this before we even close on these verses. I was in the military. You guys know my testimony. I had to follow orders. The UCMJ governed everything. We have SOPs. We had it all. When you're commanding officer, you have people at rank higher than you. It's yes, sir, no, ma'am. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, ma'am. No, sir, no, ma'am. You, you just got to follow the rules. When you're conditioned in the military to obey the hierarchy... You're not afraid of your commanding officer. You just do what he says. If you know you're doing everything he says, there's nothing to fear, right? You know you're following the laws of the land. You're not worried if you're going to get arrested or get a speeding ticket if you're not speeding. So when you fear God, he says he's going to bless you. And everything you do, everything you do, he goes on, he says this, he will bless you in everything. Then verse 10, then all the people on the earth will see that you are called by my name of the Lord and they will fear you. Verse 11, the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity, hallelujah, 
in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. Now, you can see why I have this series going on. This is very important. Because I don't see many people who have a fear of God. I just don't. I see they have fear of man, fear of politics, fear of nature, fear of this person, that person, fear of the, fear of the economy, fear of COVID, fear of this disease and that disease. I won't walk in that kind of fear. I will walk in the fear of the Lord. Again, read Ecclesiastes 12, 13, Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 13. Understand fear equals obedience, which results are blessings. Read Psalm 91. Just go to Psalm 91 again. Sometimes people interpret your lack of fear as you being arrogant or, or don't care. I do care. Trust me. But I'm not going to let it get to me because I know who sits on the throne and the earth is his footstool. Hallelujah. God's on the throne. So why would I be afraid if I know he made everything? And if he's allowing things to happen for a season? Because his will be done. Amen? We got to close with this. Verse 12. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail, if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I gave you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn. Here we go. Let me close with this. Verse 14. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. Here we go. In closing. I love this. I, I love preaching on this. Serve the Lord with fear. Serve the Lord with fear and watch how you will say no to the devil and yes to God and walk in obedience. May God bless you. Please, my friends, continue to read the word of God. Learn what God hates so that you hate it as well and walk in obedience. May God bless you. May God protect you. May his face shine upon you because God is holy He's a consuming fire. Bless his holy name. May God be with you. Join me again on another episode of Sharing the Word.